thought it'd be fun to do a video uh, called, well, just an introduction to my pen collection. Um, I'm going to call this one my fountain pen collection part one. I don't want it to be too long and I'm not going to go into too great a depth about what I have. But I'm just going to give you a little run through of some of my stuff in this first video and then I'll do some a video later with some other stuff I have. I don't have a huge collection, but I and I don't have anything particularly outstanding, but I love my collection. Everybody, you know, comes into fountain pens from different angles and I'm a person who uses my pens all the time and you know, there are some that I, I'm quite happy to have. And, uh, I Actually, I'm happy to have all my pens. So I'm just going to run through it. My cats are lurking nearby, so this video could go sideways very close. They're all sort of circling me. So anyway, I'm going to pull out this drawer. I keep my pens in a case that I made. And <laughs> uh, If you're a fountain pen user, you'll understand what I mean by my intentions got away from me and everything is very disorganized at the moment and I'd like to or to uh, <laughs> tidy it all up but at the moment it's a bit of a mess and nothing's in particular order and uh, I have a lot far too many pens inked but I'm going to run through some of the stuff I have and uh, some of these pens you'll have seen and some of them I have uh, done videos on but uh, there are a lot here that I haven't yet, and then I'll probably do some videos on them. Uh, in this box, this tray here, I have an assortment of vintage and, and modern pens. And I'm just going to start like back here. This is a Reform 1745. It's a Ger West German-made student pen. I'm quite fond of the Reform brand. It's, uh, you know no longer in existence but you can still find lots of examples of their pens and you know for a student pen this is a fun little pen it writes lovely it has a nice bounce to the nib it has an ink window um, you can find these online still they made millions of them uh, they used to be relatively inexpensive but now they have crept up in price but if you search around you can find one that's in very good shape at a reasonable price for what it is it's a small pen it's meant for children but it's you know, part of my collection, and I love it. Uh, this is a Romanian-made pen called the Flaro. It's the Olymp. Uh, this is the only example of uh, a Flaro pen that I have, but I, I really am interested in this brand. I've watched a number of videos. Um, there's a guy called the Pen Collector, and he has an extensive collection of Flaro pens, and they're very interesting, you know. At one point, there were all these small brands all around the world in different countries, and there were some really interesting pens made that you overlook. We think of the large brands now, but uh, if you look online and, and you do a little research, you can find some really interesting pens, and, 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 and that's part of the hobby that I really enjoy. This is my beloved Pilot E95S, and I love this pen. Um, you know, and it's a sort of a throwback to a vintage era. And if you uh, if you look at the nib on it, it has one of the what I think is a really nice nib. Everything's a little out of focus today. So am I. Time change does that to us all. And uh, it's gold nib. Um, it's a slip cap, and it's sort of a throwback to the uh, designs of the pilot elite from the 60s and 70s and uh you can still find these around it's a modern pen and beautiful writer uh i haven't really done a review on that i'll have to do one my next uh pen in my collection is my my lamy 2000 i'm a big lamy fan i don't have a lot of lamys we actually have two lamy 2000s in our house i have one and my wife has one I think hers is medium and mine is fine. Um, it's a classic pen designed in the 60s, still being made, um, semi-hooded nib. It's a pen that strangely, a lot of people either love it or people hate it. I love it. Um, <laughs> and, it, um, you know, it's very 
austere design. Uh, you can see there's an ink window. Uh, I have a nice thing for ink windows. I love ink windows and a pen. The body is made of macrolon. This is uh, a steel, I believe, uh, section at the front. Some people find it um, slippery. I don't. I love the warmth of the macrolon, macrolon body. Um, and for me, it's a classic pen. You know, my next pen in this tray is my Twisby Vac Mini. I love Twisbys. I think they're the best buy, best, the, the one of the best buys for your dollar. You get a lot of money. You, you get a lot of pen for your money, I should say. And uh, they have a lot of interesting designs and they come out with several different types of filling systems. This is a, 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 a Vac. Uh, and I haven't really done a review on this, but I've, you know, I have had it in my top five favorite pens, and this is one of my favorite pens, and I love it. I like, you know, it's, a, a, I like Twisby for the fact that they have, you know, clear bodies, and you can see the ink sloshing around, and they write lovely, and they just come up with some clever designs, and, you know, they have, a, a, you know, for, for the cost, um, you get an excellent pen. Next pen on this tray is my uh, Sailor Pro Gear uh, Slim 1911. It's uh, once again, it's it's a Japanese pen. It's the only Sailor I have. Um, I don't know if I'd get another really expensive Sailor. They have some lesser, you know, they have some uh, inexpensive pens that I haven't explored, and I probably will go look at some of their cheaper pens. Um, if I get another Sailor of the 1911, I might go for one of their more extravagant colors that they come up with, but I don't have a lot of white pens, and uh, I quite like this pen. It's a lovely pen. It took me a little while to get used to the nib. It's a very, very hard nib, but um, it was a matter of finding the ink for the pen that I like. You know, Sometimes that's the thing about a pen. You might put an ink in it and it just doesn't seem to work for you. And then you put another ink in it and all of a sudden, all of a sudden the, uh, the pen comes to life. So if you're having trouble with a pen, try a few different inks in it, you know, different, uh, dry, you know, you might want a dry ink, you might want a wet ink, uh, more vibrant color, things like that. And the pen can be completely changed. This is one of my, uh, treasures. It's a vintage, uh, Eclipse fountain pen made in Canada. It was a Canadian company. Um, this is in very good shape. It's a uh, lever filler and it has, you know, it, it has a more flexible nib than you'll ever find on a modern pen that sells it, that, that's promoted as a flex nib. This thing is beautiful to write with. It just you can get all kinds of line variation with it. Um, so if you're looking for like a flex nib, a true flex nib, you know, you can, you should look at it, look, look for, look around for a vintage pen. Completely different than modern flex pens. And there's really no <clears throat> real flex nibs. Uh, you know, there, there are some that are designed to be more flexible, but the old vintage pens are just amazing for flex. And that is my most flexible nib. <laughs> this is my uh, workhorse. This pen here I use every day. And it's an Echo, a Twisby Echo. And I have platinum carbon black in it. Carbon black is a very durable, safe ink for pens. It's waterproof. It's supposedly light, uh, light fast. It's a... Uh, you know, I use this and if I wet the page, uh, it doesn't run. It's very stable on this pen. I've had no clogging issues. Uh, I use this pen for writing and signing things. And I also draw with it because I, I'm an artist and I use a lot of watercolor. I use this pen for line work and paintings. And, uh, you know, uh, I love Twisbees. Like, you know, uh, they're just a... A workhorse of a pen and for the cost you're getting a really good bargain a really good bargain this is a rather interesting little pen and it's a 
the, the brand is Moore. It's a Moore 94A. Moore is, once again, one of those small manufacturers that used to exist back in the last century and no longer does. But they made some interesting pens. And this has this beautiful, like, uh, green, dark, light green, dark green, almost black striations in the finish. It's a celluloid. And some, you know, if you look at it, uh, from different angles, there's all this chatoyance going on. It's a, for a, for a vintage pen, it's actually fairly girthy. Uh, vintage pens are in general smaller than modern pens. And, uh, you know, it's a nice size pen. It's not a, uh, and it has a nice nib on it. Uh, you know, but it would be considered at that time a lower end pen, uh, lower end manufacturer, not one of the big three by any means, but it's, uh, they made some lovely pens. The 94A, if you can find it, is a very nice example of that brand. Uh, I'm not too sure when they ceased business. Next pen I have is a pen that I'm, <laughs> I'm really confused by. It's the Cross uh, Townsend uh, Medalist. And this is gifted to me recently by a friend. She uh, had found it in a thrift store and she bought it. And, you know, she uh, was indifferent to it and knew I was into fountain pens and we were chatting and I had fixed up a pen for her, an older pen that she quite loved. And then she gifted me this. And uh, Cross is one of those brands that, how can I put it? I, when I think of Cross, I think of box stores. I'm not trying to, um, yeah, that's what I think of box stores, you know, uh, big stationary stores or Walmart. Not, I, I don't believe Walmart sells them, but I think of box stores. I don't think of, uh, your dedicated stationary shops, even though they are still sold in a, uh, dedicated station, stationary shops. Um, it's, I've been tinkering with it, using it for writing and, uh, I have some questions about the design uh, of the pen. Um, and one thing I really noticed is that whoever this pen belonged to, they put a little crest on it, on the clip. And to me, that's a sacrilege. <laughs> I'm glad to have the pen. It's in my collection. But you know what? If you're giving a gift to someone, you know, they, maybe they're retiring or they graduated from school. I don't mind, you know, an, an inscription, maybe an engraved name on a pen sometimes. You'll come across a vintage pen, somebody's name will be on it. But don't alter the clip. Don't put a little badge on it. It's just wrong. I, don't do that. <laughs> so anyway, I have this pen. Um... I've been using it, and I've been looking at reviews of it, and I've been reading the history, and I, I'm actually going to do a, a review on it. Glad to have it in my collection. Don't get me wrong, but it's a very strange pen in, in some ways, and it probably has to do with this where Cross is, is placed in the marketplace of, of fountain pens uh, today, and, and it's very interesting. Certain brands have been around forever, but they almost are out of step with the fact that um, fountain pens have become very popular and people are using them more and there's so many interesting designs. Sometimes there's a few brands, I won't name them, that have just sort of remained very conservative and they aren't necessarily for fountain pen lovers. But I'll have to go into that in depth someday. Um, there's uh, another pen in this box this is a, a reform. Usually reform has a numbering system. You'll, re, you'll get the reform 1745 and so on and so on. For whatever reason, I cannot find a number for this. All I come up with is reform. Um, oddly enough, this clip that I find so interesting on this pen, I have found on a couple other reforms of different levels of, of, of quality. You know, I've seen it on a more student-oriented pen. And I wonder if this is a student pen, even though it's a, a great writer and uh, it's quite a lovely-looking pen, in my opinion. I like, I, I just, 
really like reforms. I have a thing also for black and gold <laughs> in a fountain pen. And Reform was a West German company uh, that no longer exists. I think they went out of business around the turn of the last century, 1990s. Uh, but they made some lovely pens. And you can find them still uh, in very good shape and relatively affordable. They do seem to be creeping up again in price. Uh, but yeah, they're a pen that I'm, I, I like to, to start, I'm starting to collect. I have three examples right now, but you know, I'll look around for some more. I haven't come across anything that I, I really want. <laughs> One other thing in my, my pen case is this, this, uh, pencil. It's a black wing. Black wing pencils are, are fantastic pencils. You know, I quite enjoy them. They, they, this is just a rather you know, just as plain black, but there are all these really limited edition ones with sometimes like painted scenes on them. They're quite interesting. I have a black wing uh, pencil sharpener. That's the best pencil sharpener I ever had. And maybe I'll do a, a, re, uh, a review on that. My second tray, and I'll do, this will be the last tray for today. I don't want this video to go very long. It's just a, just an introduction. I'll do a part two some other time, right? What else do we got in here? Um, this is another reform. Um, 4388 is the number. It's sometimes referred to as the triangle pen because of the shape of the, of the finial at the cap and the shape of the piston knob at the end. It's a piston filler. Uh, it has a semi-hooded nibs in a fingernail inset style. I can't really get my camera to work today for some reason. And oddly enough, I got this pen uh, at a really affordable price. And one of the reasons I bought it was the cap was cracked. And I thought, you know, I, and I glued the cap back together. And I'm very pleased with this pen. I can leave it sitting for days and it doesn't dry out, even after I've repaired the cap. I thought if I, I thought with the cracks in the cap, um, it would dry out very quickly. I used crazy glue, of all things, to, to, to fit the cap back together and fill it up. And I'm, uh, I still have a bit of work to do on the cap. I, yeah, and there's a little emblem on the side here. I don't know what exactly that means. It's like it looks almost like under a loop. It looks like a crab holding a crown of grapes. Um, yeah, but it's a very nice little pen. What I really enjoy using doesn't dry out. Uh, beautiful writer, I find it suits my taste, you know, for what I, for my my use. There's a lot of talk about gold nibs being superior to steel nibs, and this pen, in my opinion, <laughs> really kicks that argument in the in the head. This is a Faber-Castell loom, and it has one of the nicest nibs, you know, metal, steel, steel nib, gold nib. This has an excellent nib on it. It's a springy nib. It's not a flex nib, but it, it, and it just has, it has a bounce to it. And if you're looking for a really nice uh, gift for someone, it's not a cheap pen, but it's not it's under, you can get this for under a hundred dollars, uh, probably in the $70, $80 range now. So I got this one on sale actually at a very reasonable price. And uh, actually, no, this was gifted to me. We did buy another one on, on, on sale uh, for a really reasonable price. But the, the nibs on the, on this pen, you know, really it's comparable. Um, for what you're bought and paying, you're getting one of the best flexible, well, not flexible, one of the best steel nibs you can get, I think. I would even compare it to gold nibs in, in some cases for quality. It's in, it's just an excellent nib. Um, I love it. Next pen in, the, in my tray is a Spanish pen. It's the Anoxochrome 55. Uh, Anoxochrome is a Spanish company. I believe they're still in business. I don't know if they're making fountain pens. This pen is 
you know, it, it's a hard, it's a steel nib. It doesn't have any line variation. It writes very nicely. And it, this pen does also, you know, I can leave it for a week, two weeks, pick it up, and it'll write. Um, I have another one, the 77. It's not as nice as the 55, in my opinion. This is designed after the Parker 51. It's inspired by that, uh, you know, the semi, it, by the hooded nib design. And, uh, you know, it's got a nice weight to it. It's very well made, very, you know, you pick that up. It doesn't feel like cheap plastic. Uh, it writes very nicely, doesn't draw it, you know, it doesn't hard start. Um, comes in a very, uh, in a good number of colors. There's, I, I only have the white one. I should, and I really would like to pick up a couple more in different colors and get a couple of different line variations on the nib. You know, I think this is a medium and I probably should, I don't know if it comes in an extra fine. I haven't seen it, but I'd like to get a couple of different nib sizes and try some different colors. I like, uh, I'm quite interested in that brand. It's, you know, flies under the radar in my opinion, especially in North America and Canada. Uh, this is another Twisby Echo. Uh, this is the, once again, another workhorse pen. Uh, not using it as much lately. I'd use it for journaling and stuff like that. I believe I've put, I'll have to check my, my records. It's inked at the moment, I believe, with Tinnaman, Noodler tin, Noodler's Tinnaman. Before that, I had a Lamy Blue in it, and I really liked it with the Lamy Blue, but I thought I'd try, try something different, and I put the Tinnaman in it, and I don't, I, when this is empty, when I, when, you know, when I use up the Tiananmen in it, I'm going to go back with the Lamy Blue and probably keep it in that, just like that. Because, uh, oddly enough, I have a bottle of Lamy Blue, and I never could find a pen that I liked uh, to combine it with. And then I put it in the, in the Echo, and I really liked the combination. It just seemed to suit the ink, and it suited the pen. But, uh, yeah, when it ran low, I thought, oh, I'll try something else. And... You know, Tiananmen is very good ink. I like red inks, but uh, when I'm done with this, I'll put Lamy Blue back in it. Uh, what else do we got here? Oh, yes. Hmm. This is kind of a... <laughs> it doesn't look like much at first glance. You know, you might you look at a bunch of black pens, and this one is not the one that will jump out at you. But... Um, it's one of my favorite pens, and I think of it as a treasure. And it's the Aurora 88P, and it's an Italian pen. Once again, inspired by um, the Parker 51, you know, hooded nib, uh, gold nib. There is an ink window. It's full of ink at the moment, so you can't see it. Interesting thing about this pen, this is ebonite, the section. This bit of the body here is cellulite, and cellulite, uh, and the piston knob at the end is uh, ebonite. Metal cap, uh, you know, uh, I found this online in, in, in a, somebody I, uh, who had, had it online, and I put a bit on it, and I got it at a very good price, and uh, it works very, very well. It's, it, it's very smooth nib. Just ink just, it just appears magically on the page is how I would describe it. it it's a heavy, it, you know, it's not a overly heavy pen, but it's not a light pen. It's, it's beautifully made. Um, and they are collected quite extensively. There's a variety of different, uh, uh, on the Aurora 88, um, there's a variety of different models with different filling systems, different types of nibs, and uh, it's a beautiful pen. They even made a student brand, a student level pen in that in that in the Aurora 88 called the Duo Cart, and that's quite nice. Another treasure, another pen that I love is the uh, Pilot Vanishing Point, or sometimes referred to as the Pilot Capless. It's almost designed, you know, for if you're taking a lot of notes or like a thing or doing a lot of writing sessions and you don't, and you can press the little plunger and the nib or tracks and there's a little door that comes down and closes so that the nib doesn't dry out. 
um, when you some people wonder about the placement of the clip i've not found that to be an issue uh i picked it up and the first time i i used it i did notice the clip i thought oh that's kind of odd but it took me no time at all to realize that it's actually quite comfortable and it almost all uh, acts it almost acts as a something to you know set your grip to and hold on to you don't notice it uh, very beautiful writer beautiful pen you know, it's a metal pen, solidly made. Pilot, um, it's one of my favorite brands. You can't go wrong with a Pilot. <laughs> I have, uh, you know, the Pilot Metropolitan and a few vintage Pilots, and they're all really interesting pens, really well made. Um, this is a Lamy Studio. Uh, I quite enjoy Lamy designs. Uh, this is a metal one. Uh, fine nib runs it writes a little dry and uh but it's a, a lovely pen to use uh very i like the industrial nature of lamy like the the industrial design is a but they also come out with sort of classic stylish pens that uh understated in some ways some people love them some people hate them <laughs> it's one of those brands that you know, there's nobody that's sort of in the middle, almost. It's, uh, people have very firm opinions on Lamy's. You know, I fall into the category of someone who loves a Lamy, you know. This is a pen. Uh, I'm really, really happy to have in my collection. It's the Conway Stewart 106. Black and gold. Conway Stewart, oddly enough, uh, the more collectible ones are often these vibrant and colorful patterns of celluloid. I have a thing for black and gold pens. I would love to get a couple more examples of Conway Stewart's on my, in my collection, and I intend to do that over the years. Uh, if I get lucky to find one and be able to purchase it on eBay, you know. But um, it's a pull cap, gold nib. Also, once again, uh, inspired, of course, by the Parker 51 in some cases with the semi-hooded nib, right? Very popular uh, design. Every, like, Parker 51 really changed everything design-wise. Oddly enough, I don't have a Parker 51. Someday I will, but not yet. And I really haven't really thought of getting the, the new uh, Parker 51. I... I uh, there, there you go. I think because I have so much stuff in the background, it's really confusing to watch here. But anyway, the next pen is probably my most flamboyant pen. And that is the Twisby uh, 700R Iris. It's, it's a limited edition pen. It's a titanium uh, trim you know, like uh, on the pen, and it's been sort of treated chemically so that you get these fantastic rainbow colors. Each pen in this this model, uh, the, 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 the the iris is different. You, you can't really control what colors the, 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 the titanium uh, transforms into. You can sort of, you know, by the length of time you keep it in the uh, procedure, you get different colors. I think uh, I've seen it, somebody doing an experiment online using voltage, and uh, I sh I'm not too sure how they do it, probably using electrical current to uh, alter the uh, the colors. But uh, you can also do it with a chemical process. I'd have to, but you, as you see, you get these beautiful colors in the pen. Um, it even goes to the nib. Uh, <laughs> and I have uh, picked an ink that I think suits it, and that is the um, uh, Private Reserve Tanzanite. Uh, Private Reserve, even though I only have a couple, bo a few bottles of Private Reserve, I really like the Tanzanite, and I like Private Reserve. From what I've experienced with it, it's really nice ink. And this, yeah, but... Tanzanite in this ink is perfect, and it's a beautiful ink. I really love it. 
<laughs> and the last pen I'm going to show you is just a little gel pen that I picked up. I'm using, a, at the moment, I'm doing a light fastness test on this. And I, what I did was I, I drew on a piece of black paper and I, with the gel pen and I put it in the window and every few weeks I will check on it to see if it fades. And after 10 days, I checked it and it hasn't faded yet. So that's a good sign. I'll know in a month whether I can use this for my artwork and think that it's relatively stable. And I'll keep it up over the course of the year to see what happens with direct sunlight on this gel pen. And if I get good results, I can use these gel pens in my work. And it's a Uniball Signo uh, White. And anyway, I have other pens, but I'm not going to get into it right now. The video is going long, but... Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's fun to do these things. I love watching them myself on YouTube. I have other pens in my collection and I, I, I'm always, you know, I try not to get too crazy. I don't have a huge collection, but I, I really enjoy it. I use it all the time. It's, you know, um, I think of them as tools and beautiful objects, of course, but, but also, you know, tools. The great thing about fountain pens is they're not disposable. Uh, you're not, buying a pen and running out of ink and tossing it in the garbage. You know, they're things that you uh, can reuse and it's, they last a lifetime and then they last beyond your lifetime and you can p pass them on to the next generation or someone else who might use them. Uh, yeah, there's so many beautiful things with fountain pens. But anyway, I hope you've had a great day and I hope you've liked the video. And if you do, I'd love it if you would subscribe. I'm slowly building my channel. It's fun to do. I'm really enjoying it. And give it a thumbs up if you like the video. So I'll probably do a part two in a couple of weeks of this video. So thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.